Well, everybody, welcome back. We're finally here with another video. After lockdown, it's been quite tough trying to get out. Today we've come to Sullivan's Dam, which is located north of Dunedin. It actually contributes to Dunedin's water supply. And fish and game, very nicely, stack it with brown and rainbow trout, just for us to go and catch. Now, I'm excited about this, because I've not been fly fishing in years, let alone, in fact, I think I've never ever been wet fly fishing before. So that's what we're gonna have a crack at today. Hopefully see if we can pick one up. If the wet flies aren't doing their thing, we'll move to some nymphs, see if we can pick something up on a little stone fly. I've got a new combo here and I'm just gonna take you through my setup real quick. All right guys, so this right here is the Reddington Cross Water Path. Now this is five weight rod. Apparently I have floating line on there. And right now I've got about, give or take, eight foot of trace. And we've just got a wee little wet fly there. And I find that olive green color can actually be dynamite on some of these fish, especially the browns that are a bit more reluctant. That color just seems to really turn it on sometimes for them. All right guys, so when it comes to fly fishing, First things first, let's go come to safety. And the last thing you want is a hook in the eye. So that's where these guys come in. If you get polarized glasses, they should cut through the water a little bit so you can actually spot some of the fish as well. Now, if you go to hunting and fishing at the moment and get a trout license for this year, they're gonna give you a free pair of polarized glasses so I would highly recommend you going and doing that right so the first thing you want to do when you enter an area like this is you've got to start thinking about it systematically you've got to start thinking where are this fish gonna be so one of the first things I'm gonna be picking up is I'm looking right now there's a slight breeze coming this way and that means all of the food is gonna be pushed and pushed and pushed through the lake round to this area. Now, when we're gonna do it, we have a look, we analyze the hole, and we're gonna start uh, at your further side over here, and we're gonna move anti, we're gonna move clockwise in that direction, just to make sure we cover as much ground as we possibly can. So let's get this line out, give it a cast, and see if we can't pick up a fish or two. Now it's completely raining now, and I know that'd turn off a lot of people, but the thing is, when you're fishing in still water, the rain not only it can turn on the bite and get other fish feeding, but it can also hide your line from those little splashes when it touches the water surface. So you're a lot more invisible to the trout. So they're more active and you aren't detected. So remember, trout, once they get big enough, their only real predators, well, if they're in the lakes like this setting where there's no big salmon or anything like that to eat them, once they get big enough, their only real predator is actually things above them. So they have very good eyesight and look out for those sorts of things. But in this situation, we have the advantage. So all I've been doing is just moving my way up the bank, covering as much ground as I can, 
and over here we've got a little still water inlet now that's going to have a flow coming out of it this way but what happens is part of it is going to come over these stones and into this pool over here which means there could be trout lying just off because trout like to expend the least amount of energy they possibly can so I expect a lot of them would sit in this little pool and just come out and take little snacks from that little, uh, little current whenever they can so let's have a wee cast and we're going to go just up this bank here I can see where it drops off and that's going to be the perfect line for the trout to be sitting in so let's give this a crack there we go that's right where we want it and all we're going to do is a strip retrieve so watch my hands here all I'm going to do is give a good pull let it sink good pull let it sink again a lot of the time the trout will actually hit that while your little nymph your wet fly whatever you're using is sinking all right that's where we want it pop one two three one, two, three, and you want to vary your retrieves all the time. You never know what might appeal to that trout. So whatever you can do to mimic these little insects as closely as you can, and really take time to observe what you can see in the water, what the trout are actually feeding on. Because it can make the difference between you catching and not catching fish. Alright guys, so we've been here for about 20-25 minutes and we've moved up. There's a little bit of a deeper hole here and I don't think the fly's quite getting down far enough. So it always pays to come with a few split shots so you can get a little bit deeper. Because nine times out of 10, those trout are gonna be staying right on the bottom. They're not gonna be too far up in the water column, especially at this time of year. So I think it would be a good idea to chuck on a split shot and always come with a range of flies. I've said it before and I'll say it again, trout, are picky on the best of days they can be very fussy eaters so it's important to come with a range of flies that look nice and good and mimic the patterns that they are eating so let's chuck this split shot on we'll chuck on a new fly and see if we can't get one all right team so just a quick swap around that's the olive green one i was using before if you can see that so i'm just going to give him a quick snip Track them back and I'll show you what I'm gonna change it to So here we go Look at this guy. So we've got a beaded head and it's a kind of brown with a little bit of red tinsel And that's just a really good smell looking pattern. So we're gonna chuck this guy out Probably do a slightly faster retrieve and we'll chuck a split shot on make sure he's down a bit deeper and we'll see what happens. Let's do it. All right, so here we now have our fly tied on here. You cut the little bit of tag in, and then about give or take 30 or 40 centimeters, probably 40, 40 to 50 centimeters up actually. Wash my mouth out. Um, we're just going to put a wee split shot right there. So you clamp it on, either Preferably do it with pliers, but I don't have any on me right now, so I'm doing it with my teeth. Give it a bite. But I highly recommend you do pliers, because you do not want to stuff your teeth like mine. But there we go. A little fly and a wee split shot. And I just want to say, first impressions from this rod, I am very impressed. My first few casts were... Very, very dusty and fair enough because it's been a very long time since I've been out. But man, I am in love with this rod. It feels good, casts good, and I'm starting to get the hang of it again. 
and let's see if we can get this guy out and get a fish on. Now I just wanted to show you guys something. So here is a perfect example of where trout could hold. So if we have a look up here, we can see the slight ripples on this lake, right? Can you guys see that wind? Hopefully you can. The slight ripples coming this way. That means a lot of the food is going to be blowing this way. And then if we look around here, just around this point, we've got still water. Now, like I said before, trout don't really like expending much energy. But what happens naturally when there's wind on the lake is all the food is going to be pushed where the, the wind is going. In this case, it's coming down this little channel up here. And that means it's a perfect spot for the trout to just sit, hang, and happily munch nymphs and little fish as soon as they come. And I think I just got a strike, and I missed it because I was talking to you guys. But there we go, shows you, theory is work. So hopefully we can see if we can hook them. So again, you want to maximize your situation without spooking the fish. So what I'm going to do in this situation if I, is I've got all of this area to cover here, right? So like I said earlier, we're going to start all the way on your left hand side and we're going to work this whole hole clockwise. So first things first, we're going to go into a D loop. So we're just going to come up, out, cast back and again. So what you can do, it's now old guys out there, so we're just going to strip it back. I'll just try and make sure that rain's not getting on the camera for you. So we're just going to nicely strip this back, and we're just looking and feeling for any little soft pulls. Sometimes the trout don't always run away with it, you know. Okay, and don't be scared to go close to the bank because they'll they'll sit there and lie. There's little rocks down there, so there's lots of life always around the rocks. Doesn't have your fishing in the lake, the sea. Now, one of the best ways to get your line back out after you've retrieved it is you lift your rod up like a big D. And we're just going to do a D loop. And this one, we're going to do a D loop cast and then bring it back and cast it again. So form your big D behind you, back and out. And just like that, simple way of getting your line out fast. And from there, we've done that side. So now we're going to go a few degrees this way, start covering that side of the pool. And this just maximizes your chances of the fish seeing it, the fish having time to decide whether he wants to eat it. And trout can be very, very lazy, especially when there's lots of food around. They might not go for your lure unless they think it's really worth it. So making sure you can get it all over the lake and all those probable places where those trout hang is very very important for your success as an angler. That we have our first fish on. Beautiful! And we're fishing. All times you want to keep your rod tip high and you want to play that fish and just you've got to love it when a plan comes off. Oh yeah now he's waking up. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, you've got to love it, don't you? When a plan pulls off like that, man, this is going to be my first time fly fishing in a very long time. First time ever still water fly fishing. And look at that, we've got a rod. Well, we've got a rod. We've got a fish on. It looks like it's a nice wee rainbow. And what you want to do is you just want to play them 
tire mount, remember you've got very light gear. Your line is gonna be very light when you're fly fishing. So don't rush it, take your time, let him tire himself out. And just like that, see so he's running again. And you always wanna keep that tension. Trout have incredibly soft mouths. So you never wanna rush it or let there be slack in the line. You always wanna keep that tension on so you don't lose the fish. Oh, beautiful little rainbow trout. It's lit up in his beautiful spawning colors. Gotta work out where I wanna land him. Oh, that's fantastic stuff on the new rod. The Crosswater Path Reddington. And I think it's safe to say that our method pull ended up working out. Yay! Oh, it feels good to have a fish on again. We headed to the canals and I managed to catch nice brown. We had heaps of salmon smashing our laws and then breaking off, but during the day it was not going well. Nighttime was great, but it's really nice to just come here only about five, 10 minutes up the road from my flat and you can come and catch quality, quality fish just like this. And it's a lot of fun. I've been studying hard out. And it's so good to get out there, get outdoors, and have little fish like this. All right, now I'm just gonna head down to a more accessible area. And you can just slowly turn your rod and they'll turn his head and help guide him with you. But if he wants to go, let him go, just keep that tension on. And you just want to make sure that you keep them out of any rocks or little things that could break your line. Come on, buddy. And so this was that new fly tied on and this was with the split shot. And again, it's just watching for those angles. All the food is being pushed over this way because of the wind. And now just like that, plan paid off. And we've got a beautiful little rainbow trout. If I can get him in the net. Bang. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Check that guy out. That is absolutely stunning. Alright, so I've wet my hands. Oh, he is a gorgeous fish. Look at him, absolutely beautiful. So we're just gonna take this little hook out. Oh, easy buddy. Oh, and he just came everywhere. <laughs> Clearly in spawning conditions. Look at that. What a beautiful, beautiful, good condition fish. And he's got plenty of fight left in him. So this guy's gonna go home. No, I think he's just going to power away. Yeah, he's just going to power away, but sometimes you've just got to leave them in the water for a bit. So let's say goodbye to this guy. Thank him for the fight. Give him a kiss. Mwah. Thanks, buddy. And then we put him in the water. Let some water rush over his gills. And when he's ready, he should just kick his way home. So get some water flowing. And there he is. And he's away. Frickin' awesome, guys. What a day. All right, let's get that line back out there and see if we can't hook another one. Let's do it. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for. But how good was it just being able to get that one fish? I really urge you guys to get out there, enjoy it. We're back in level two. So make sure you get out there and make the most of it. And again, New rod, the Reddington Path cross, Crosswater. It is very good. First impressions, I'm a big fan, so highly recommend that, that rod for anyone who's looking at getting it. 
Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember, like, subscribe, hit that little bell button, and we'll catch you out there next time. See you later. Thank <laughs> you.